Hey everybody, how we doing today? Uh, it's Leo, it's your old hillbilly buddy Leo with the hillbilly files and I am just about ready to dive into some really thick stuff here. Yeah, that's that's where I'm going. Right up through there. Now I brought y'all up here once before and showed you showed you something back up in here. Uh, today I, I'm in uh, I'm actually I'm in Thacker, West Virginia. Today uh, I came here before and showed you guys Jim Vance's grave, also known as Crazy Jim to the McCoys and Uncle Jim to the Hatfields. Uh, I'm back for a couple reasons. One, he has a he has a brand new marker that was recently placed up here. I brought y'all up here and showed you the grave uh, back in the winter. We just recently discovered Jim's grave. It, you know, been more or less lost to time. I mean, there was. I mean, if you look at it from a certain standpoint, if ten people out of three billion on the planet or whatever it is these days know where your grave is, but the other billions don't you're sort of still lost you know what I mean but uh, like I said he has a new marker uh, that was placed up here um, just a few months ago if I'm not mistaken it was placed by his relative Terry Vance but I can't 100% verify that because there's not much that comes up about you know about that when you search it it's very recent uh, I do know that re some reenactors went up and they had a, a ceremony unveiling his new stone so we're going to go check out that today and also um when we came up before we sh we showed you the grave you know it was kind of impressed that we'd found it you know to be honest um, <laughs> uh, but didn't really get into you know much about the man himself you know about jim himself uh, you know realistically who was the man? I mean, really, I mean, the man, not not the legend. Um, there's all sorts of legends uh, about the man, you know, and a lot of it, you know, sensationalized. Y'all know how newspapers and things do these days. Uh, Jim Vance was one of the better known participants of the Hatfield-McCoy feud. Uh, he's surrounded by so many different stories and different opinions by people that didn't even know him that it's it's really hard to get a grip on what's reality and what is just well it's over exaggerated myth you know at this point um so let's stick to what we do know is fact so uh he was born in logan county and it was virginia at the time became but became part of west virginia in 1863 uh he was the son of elizabeth vance the grandson of Tug Valley pioneer Abner Vance and the uncle of William Devalance Hatfield. Uh, he was involved in and most likely led the, the New Year's Day raid on Randall McCoy's house and family uh, leading to the death of two of his children and severely injuring his wife. Uh, a week later on January 8, 1888, Jim and Cap Hatfield, Devil Ants' second oldest son, were surprised by a large number of Kentuckians near uh, Vance's Logan, which is now Mingo County, home. Uh, Vance was wounded in a shootout and then killed in, clo uh, in cold blood at close range by McCoy partisan uh, Frank Phillips. According to an article in the Decatur, Illinois Review, Vance was shot seven times. He was buried in an unmarked grave in the forest where he fell. So I'm not so sure about that. Because either other people were buried with him after, or he was the first one to be put up there, or the buried where he fell story is completely made up. Now, uh, where we are, Devil Ants Rock is right straight up the hill. It's about a half a mile. Now, this is about, I'm going to guess, it's 2,000 foot mountain. And we are ballpark around 700, give or take. The spot that I'm going to go to when I leave here 
is going to be near where he was shot. Now, where he was shot is straight back this way. You, Like I said, you've got a 2,000 foot mountain directly in front of you. On the other side of the mountain, way down in the valley, is Double Camp Road, and that's where we'll be going a little bit later. It's from here by straight shot. If I go straight up here, straight over the mountain, and straight down the other side, I checked this on Google Earth last night. Uh, this is 1.13 miles, so just under a mile and a third, you know, give or take. To get there... <laughs> To get there, though, is a 13-mile drive. <laughs> it, that, that's just the way we work here in West Virginia, guys. Everything's up a holler. You've got to come back down the holler, get back out on the main road, go down the road to the next holler, up that holler, and then get there. That's that's just how it works here. You know, what, what can I say? It's only a mile, well, 1.13 miles this way to, oh, sorry, this way <laughs> holding finger up here that way and you can't see it uh, 1.13 miles that way to get to him as the crow flies but to get to him in a car you've got to go back down get in your car get on thacker road thacker holler road drive all the way back out go back up to mate one mate one west virginia and then head back up the other side to get back up in there now, there is, if you do come up this way, there is a character right out here named Dewey. Now, when I came up here uh, back in the winter when, you know, we were looking for the grave, you know, when it was a mystery, um, I ran into Dewey, and Dewey gave me really very specific directions, hillbilly style. <laughs> now I was cool with this you know you're because I'm a hillbilly I know how to you know I, I get it you know you, you turn left at the dog and then you'll see a crow when you see that crow you know that you're you know that sort of thing that's just how it works here you gotta you know you just gotta be one of us you just gotta know but, <laughs> but anyhow he told me to go up and to look for the two trees which two trees to look forward to look for and all this kind of stuff and I followed his directions and went right straight to it. But uh, he is, I tried to get him to be, to be on video. I actually asked him three times if he would be on the video, but he politely declined. And if you remember, for it, those of you who saw the other video, uh, he is a, he drives a, a bus, a church bus. Well, it's, you can't see it right now. It's gonna show up there, it's right on the side of the house. Uh, it's a free will Baptist church bus. And like I mentioned in the video, I saw as soon as I saw the church bus, this is a safe door to knock on. This guy is a free will Baptist. He is much, much more likely to offer you lunch than he is to tell you to get off his land. And I was right. He was a really good guy. But anyhow, Dewey, he's kind of, he's sort of become uh, Jim Vance's grave's unofficial caretaker, sort of so to speak uh whenever people come up through here and you know they're looking for jim's grave they invariably they have to come to his house it's the last house on the stop you know that's that's where you park so <laughs> they automatically go to his house and we were out there and he was telling me he said several over the years he had the people that came up to bring the uh the headstone back in the spring uh whenever people come up looking he's the guy that points you in the right direction uh, he's just this really, really awesome guy. Uh, I would have thought he was in his 50s. I would have thought he's about my age, but he said he was 70. Uh, your hair ain't even gray yet. What are you doing? <laughs> but he's a really good guy. I just found out that uh, found out this morning I'm actually related to his wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, I'm going to jump in here, I guess. I've got to go through the creek right there. And then I've got a little narrow path that goes way up into the woods back in here. Yeah, I said woods, Heather. Heather likes to tease me about the way I say woods. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to head in. If you guys are ready, we're going to head on up. Now, when you get in this stuff, anybody from here knows 
that you aren't looking up in the trees when you do this stuff. You can, whoa, slippery rock. You can look up in the trees, but if you do, something on the ground's gonna bite you. You better look down. I'm not sure what that is, but it's really cool. <laughs> like a great place to be a snake, don't it? Okay, time to climb the hill. Now this thing was, this hill was pretty rough in the winter. <laughs> uh, I'm a guessing that it probably ain't much easier in the hot weather. It's, uh, I'm going to say, I don't know, mid-80s today, something like that. It's pretty warm. But uh, we've got some climbing to do. And I remember this one when I came over before. This one was one of the unmarked. And you notice, I don't know what's up with this. Look at that. There's four burnt posts. One there, one here. A little one right there and one right there and the fence around it not really sure what's up with that I'm guessing that there are some unmarked graves right here uh, we are going that way through the weeds up the path up the hill that place is just as pretty in the summer as it is in the winter Spectacular in it. A bit of West Virginia wholesome goodness right there in it, guys. Look at that. How beautiful is this? All shady down here underneath the canopy. Very little sunlight reaches the ground down here. But I'll leave the camera on. Till I start huffing and puffing from climbing the hill. <laughs> and then I'll shut the camera off for a minute and climb the rest of it. <sighs> I know he's up there a little ways. Keeping my eyes downward. Like I said, you can look up. But you better not do it for very long. <laughs> out of practice been driving to too many places ain't been climbing to enough of them back in here though I remember back in the winter coming up here and you can see I've come a long ways from down through there I remember back in the winter I came up here Hunted and hunted and hunted. Uh, for those two trees he was telling me about. All I needed to do was go a little bit further. They were further than I thought they were. And just guessing. I'm going to say they're probably not any closer now. So. <laughs> Alright. Enough of the embarrassing huffing and puffing. Climbing the mountain. We're going to shut the camera down. Climb on up the mountain. We'll fire it up when we get there. Well, I found him again. Uh, it's a little bit harder this time of year. In the winter, you can see what you're doing. You can see. But I remember the two big oak trees. That one and that one. And the creek running right beside of it that Dewey told me about last winter. So as I came up, I was just looking for the creek and the two big, big oaks. And I come up through there and the whole place is cleared out now. And there is Jim Vance's new stone. This was just placed um, a couple months ago, something like that, the family. There's the original marker right there. This one was added later. That's the one I showed you when I came up the other time. <clears throat> and 
And right here is the new head stomp for Jim Vance. Company B, 34th Virginia Cavalry, Confederate States of America, 1832 to 1888. The one and only Jim Vance, right there. Now, some people, you know, there are, there are very much conflicting stories about Jim. Some people say, well, quite frankly, some people say that Jim was an unbalanced, bloodthirsty drunk and an instigator in the few, while others say he was a contributing, positive member of society a loyal family man, an all-around good guy. Imagine that. In reality, I think he's probably somewhere in the middle of myself, you know, a little normal and a little crazy, just like everybody else, just like the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> you know, to, to be honest, there are stories, you know, that... Now I'm going to get back in the shade just a little bit. It's really hot. There are stories that... Uh, Jim and Cap, so look at that, there's a little grave right there, a little kid grave. Dewey said there was over 300 people here, but there's only seven marked graves. But uh, anyway, uh, a lot of people, Jim and Cap, a lot of people claim that they were, you know, the prime instigators of the feud. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of conjecture. You know, there's a lot of things that would imply that you know maybe maybe a lot of that's true but you know realistically the man he's not here to defend himself and neither is anyone that was alive in his time so we can only go by bits of info you know scattered around like breadcrumbs really uh it's tricky to find the facts sometimes when they're mixed in with the fiction when researching these stories um to be honest back in the day the news sens sensationalized so much of the feud, you know, just like they do today. You know, they would come up with this story, that story, and none of it was true. You know, it's just to sell papers is all they were doing. So, you know, realistically, you don't know. Uh, when we started, you know, doing a little bit of research, you know, actual research on Jim, uh, he first turns up on the census at 18 married to Mary Collins, who was 19, uh, living in his mother's house with one child named Jane, who was one year old. A little more research, uh, it looks like it was uh, Virginia Jane, who they called Jane or Jane Jenny. She actually ended up marrying into my family on the feral side. So, you know, that was, that was something new I learned. Uh, <laughs> imagine that. Uh, flash forward to the census when he's 40, uh, shows him still with Mary with three children at his house, at his house, uh, Elizabeth 15, named after his mother, obviously, uh, James 13 and Amy 11. Uh, you know, obviously she had left by this point. Uh, it says that, uh, it says that he lived in, in the Magnolia district, so it's impossible to really pinpoint his house for sure. Magnolia District is a really big area. It covers all of Mate 1, you know, the entire surrounding area. Uh, we have a, a carnival comes in every year called the Magnolia Fair. So, you know, like I said, it's a really big place, you know, and he lived in the Magnolia District is all it says. Um, in the census in 1880, uh, he was 50 years old. And it shows the same people with him, you know, just a little bit older. Uh, so today, we are visiting Jim and telling a little bit about him. As far as he's betrayed, uh, portrayed in the miniseries and basically, you know, everywhere else, you know, we'll just leave that up for, for you to decide for yourself. You know, we'll tell you what we can and the rest of it, you know, if it's fact, we'll tell you if it's fiction will either you know tell you that or leave it out you know mention that it's conjecture we try anyway um it said that uh, that he and the logan wildcats a uh, confederate militia group killed randall mccoy's brother asa for being a union soldier but 
it, it's highly debatable. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, bring up a lot of interesting points, you know, to, um, to debunk it, you know, quite frankly. Um, and it's just realistically speaking, it's useless to try and unravel, you know, whether that part was true or not. Uh, there's just so much to the Hatfield-McCoy feud, it, it can become a headache, you know, to figure it all out. And quite frankly, to be honest, there's always someone else that thinks they know everything about everything, no matter what you say. So, you know, a lot of it you're going to have to take with a grain of salt, you know, and just kind of, what do you think? You know, that sort of thing. Um, we know quite a bit about uh, about Jim. I started to say James. Everybody calls him Jim. We'll call him Jim. Uh, we do know quite a bit about James. Like I said, there's there's stories that he and Cap were, you know, some serious instigators in the feud, and that the feud, in theory, would have died out years before if Cap and Jim hadn't gotten involved. But like I said, you know, a lot of it is conjecture. A lot of it, a lot of the stories about both sides are just straight up made up. So, you know, it just depended on who you asked, I suppose. But uh, we do know he fought for the South. We know that much. Uh, he's got his, little, got his little Confederate flags and everything. Uh, we, we know that much for sure. But, uh, you know, it's, it's still, to me, it's just kind of, to me, it's wild, you know, to be standing you know, not just Jim, you know, other historical characters as well, you know, doing this YouTube channel, you know, you're standing right beside, I mean, the one and only Jim Vance from the Hatfield-McCoy feud is right in front of me, you know, that's kind of, I mean, you know, the dude may have had some, he had some quirks, we'll just say that, he had some, he had some issues, but, I guess a lot of them did, you know, you don't really, you don't really have a feud that lasts as long as the Hatfield-McCoy feud did with as many people killed, as many fatalities, without both sides being a little bit crazy, you know, and I, I'm related to both sides, so I guess I can say that, yeah, they were crazy, so <laughs> but anyway, the, the, the theory about him being buried where he fell. Now, like I said, that was something I kind of wanted to touch on. Because like I mentioned earlier, if you go straight up this mountain, Devil Ants Rock is right up there. It's up on top of the mountain. It's about a half a mile from here, I checked. And over on the other side of the mountain, down in the valley, on the other side of this mountain right here, is supposedly where the incident happened. I mean, they are... Uh, um, one mile and one th one one mile point one three was what Google Earth said. So I mean, granted, it's really close, but not quite. Man, these little bugs, man, they're just eat you up out here. It is beautiful, though, isn't it? Just look at that, that tree canopy. It's just a beautiful place here. I think somebody got a. A deer stand up in the tree back there. But, uh, yeah, like I was saying, Dewey, he was telling me that there were over 300 graves here and only seven of them had markers. You know, and like right here, I, I don't doubt it. I mean, look at this. This is, there's a headstone and right there's a footstone. They're about four feet apart, give or take. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is a child's grave. So either he was the very first one to put here, to be put here, and the other 299 people were put here afterward. But anyway, I guess I'm gonna, here in a minute, I'm gonna poke around a little bit just to see. Like I said, I came up in the winter and looked around and I found a bunch. I found a, a whole bunch like that, you know, just unmarked. But I had no clue that there was around 300 graves up here. Doesn't look it, does it? This looks like some West Virginia woods. But it's not. It's a graveyard. Kind of like.
want you to go to we just got back from Tennessee you know from all those graveyards and beautiful Civil War graveyards and Elvis and uh, Johnny Cash and all that kind of stuff and all these beautiful magnificent graveyards and then you come back home <laughs> <laughs> and this is our graveyards. Oh well, man, these little flies just buzzing around. They want none of them up here in the winter. One good thing about the winter, you don't have that many bugs and snakes and stuff like that. And, and you might be a little bit of a hillbilly. It take it don't you don't have to be. A hillbilly to get out here in knee-deep wood knee-deep weeds back in the woods somewhere you don't have to be a hillbilly but it certainly helps I'll tell you that <laughs> uh, there's a couple you can see one right there and another one right behind it just plain rocks there uh, trying to look around to see if I see any more right here there's one these are just in this one little spot right here. But you can see where they've came in and cleared a really wide area around this. That fence, if you remember, that fence was over here and there was some rocks around it. Come to think of it, it's oriented different now. It was this way. Now it's that way. It was that way. Huh. His headstone's moved. It's oriented different. It certainly is. See, when I came over here this other time, it was this way back in the winter. But now it's this way. And that makes sense because I bet you that's Jim's footstone right there. I just about bet you that's his footstone. And that would line right up. So I'm guessing... The original was right. This one was off a little bit. And then when they put the new one in, they straightened it up and put it the way it goes. It makes sense, don't it? But anyway. Well, Jim. It was nice seeing you again, brother. We met you a while back. And some of your McCoy friends. And a whole bunch of Hatfield friends, too. But uh, y'all know how it is. We'll, we'll continue on, bring y'all all this interesting stuff. Historical places, lost names, all that kind of stuff. We'll continue to bring it on. We've still got one more stop to go today, too. But uh, before we head out, there is one little thing that I would like to mention to you guys. Um, I would like to bring up, I should say. Uh, and a lot of people, they, uh, you know, when they, they view a page that they, that they like, uh, sometimes they'll hit notifications, sometimes they'll subscribe, sometimes if you just watch a couple videos from someone, their videos will pop up in your feed. So, you know, a lot of times people, they don't, they don't bother to hit the subscribe button, you know, and I get why. But I, I would like to ask you guys, if you like the show, if you'd like to see us do more, go more places, do us a little favor and hit subscribe up top. It really helps us out. We're going to try to get some some sponsors. Uh, we'd like to try and get, uh, you know, get something going. Maybe a little camp or something like that. And see if we can't take our little hillbilly show on the road, so to speak. So, we could sure use it. If any of you guys, if you hadn't clicked subscribe yet, feel free to go ahead and cl click subscribe. And we'd sure appreciate it. You'd, you'd be helping us out a little bit. So, Anyway, but uh, get off of that. Try not to sound too awful beggy. You know how hillbillies are. They're, hillbillies are, well, they're stubborn, and they're, and they're very proud. They're, they're stubborn about being proud, and they're proud about being stubborn. So, <laughs> so you know, to, to ask someone to do something for you, even if it is just clicking a button, is you get where I'm going. Anyway. For those of you who don't, thank you for watching just the same. We appreciate you just the same. But we'd appreciate you more if you, you know, if you could click subscribe and help us out. Got it? <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, I'm going to head out here, leave this beautiful little place. And I've got one more stop today, another place I want to show you along the way. But uh, I guess nothing to do now but start climbing back down the mountain, huh? But uh, I got a pretty good ways to go. You can, I don't know if you can see right out through there where this mountain comes down and that mountain goes up that way. That is in line with where I'm parked at, where Dewey lives. Except it's way down there. This is a good little climb up here. So yeah, feel free to click subscribe. <laughs> Alright, I'll leave it alone. I'll quit that. <laughs> Alright, let's head on down the hill. I would look around a little bit more. But like I said, we came up in winter and documented a lot of this. Look at this. Here's, there's one. You see that? Right there to that stone. And then right beside of it, right there to that stone. And they're laying in opposite directions. That one's that way. And this one goes that way. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there were 300 graves up here. It would not surprise me at all. And only seven of them have markers on them. And Jim's one of them, him and six others are the only ones out of all these graves that have markers and all of the rest of these people have been lost to time. All of them. It's terrible, isn't it? You know, you'd like to think that, you know, you live your life and you do all these things that somebody will remember, but it doesn't always work out that way, does it? You know, it's sad. It's just sad, you know, to think that someone's entire life, you know, could be summed up with two dates on a headstone. But when you get right down to it, folks, that's all you get, you know? You might have a fancy stone. Some stones might be fancier than others, but it's still a rock with two dates on it. You know, that's about the best you can hope for. And all of these people, none of them got that. Six or seven out of 300 got that. And the rest will be lost. Sad, isn't it? You know, the one guy who did something bad, you know, was known for... he He's not famous for being for curing cancer okay you know and most of the Hatfield the Hatfield McCoy feud the characters in it they're not really famous for doing good things you know Cap and his favorite murder weapon you know like I mentioned in Cap's video if you have a favorite murder weapon there's a pretty good chance you're not the nicest dude in town when you agree so you know like I said a lot of times you know people they're they're famous for good things and they're famous for bad things. Red Fox Trail, when we did that one over in Virginia, the murderer, and got the trail named after him. But the people that he murdered, they got nothing. Kind of funny, isn't it? You would think that, you know, the trail should be named after the people he murdered, not the dude that did the murdering. But, here we are. And Jim's you know, like I said, Jim's grave is one of seven out of 300 to have a marker, and the others don't. Kind of ironic, isn't it? You know, you take this other dude over here, he may have, you know, saved a bunch of children for all we know. He could have done something spectacular, but we don't know who he is. He's He's lost to history, and you can't look him up either because there's nothing to look up. You know, just kind of sad, isn't it? Now I hear a, a squirrel up there dropping something at me. Now I guess he's trying to tell me I need to get on out of here and shut up. Okay, Mr. Squirrel, you have a good day, dude. <laughs> okay, all right, back down the hill. I'm going to do it for real this time. Shut up. 
headed back down the hill about halfway back down and I spotted something that I thought you guys might find interesting something I wanted to show you guys now I don't know how well you can see this little dude he's just a few inches in front of the camera I'm trying not to touch him you see the spider can you see him right in front of the camera let's see if I can get him to move a little bit there he goes there he goes. He's running. See him right there on the branch. You can get some. There we go. Right there. Those, if you've ever been trail riding or out in the woods walking, you know how you'll be walking along and you run into a big face full of spider webs? That's these dudes. They're called golden orb weavers. And that thing, he will get as big as a silver dollar. I mean, they get big. They get great, big, beastie-looking things. If y'all saw the movie uh, Starship Troopers, the alien, you know, the, the alien bug things, the planet Clendathu. Yeah, I watched that one time too many, maybe. <laughs> but uh, the bugs in that movie are based on these dudes because they just look, oh, my God, when they get big, they just look terrifying. I mean, they're just stone-cold, vicious-looking things. It looks like he could kill everything you know. I'll put it that way. I mean, they get really big, but they're they're harmless. They don't bite or anything like that. I had one on my handlebars. Uh, one time I was out riding, I just left him there, took him for a little ride. But <laughs> I think they're really pretty, the, the yellow on them. I don't know how well you can see. That one's not that big. He's not that big. It's still a little early. But uh, I think they're really pretty. Uh, I get where, I, I can see where some people might not agree with me, you know, just because of, he looks so vicious. You know, he looks downright dangerous, but he's not. <laughs> he's he's just after little tiny bugs. Is all he cares about, little bugs. He don't care about you. He don't really want you walking in through his web, but, you know, we'll deal with it. But I just thought I'd stop by and show you all that. You know, a lot of you have, have actually ran into these guys and didn't even know it. Called Golden Orb Weavers. All right. <laughs> I just walked up on a bear. I was coming down the hill. And he's out here on the trail coming up. And I saw him before he sees me. He caught a whiff of me. And raised his head up and looked at me. Stood there for just a second or two. And took off out through that way. Just ran up on a bear, y'all. Welcome to West Virginia. <laughs> okay. Now this is, well, it's 13.13 miles from where I was just at earlier. That is the exact same mountain from the other side. You go up here, like I said, it's about 2,000 feet up, 2,000 foot tall. You come all the way back down the other side, well, almost, you know. And that's where Jim's grave is. That's where we were just at, was right on the other side of this mountain, directly that way. Now, where I'm parked at is the mouth of Double Camp Branch, and you can see the sign for it. My little dog not real happy about me being here, is he? But uh, that's the sign for Double Camp Branch, and it's right here. This is where you turn to go up in there. This right here, and I brought y'all over here once before, Jack Hatfield and I, and uh, his cousin uh, came over here, uh, our cousin, came over here and was just showing the young lady some of her family. You know, she had recently found out that she was Hatfield, and so we were showing her some of her family signs. But uh, this is where Ellison Hatfield, that's him right there. That's where his house was, is set right back in here. And Double Camp, if you go all the way up to the end of this, there's an old um, uh, Hatfield Cemetery up in there. But the reason I brought y'all here was, well, it's simple, <laughs> just to show you something, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> the thing about this is a lot of times these old stories 
like I told you about how the newspapers would sensationalize stories and things like that sell more papers this is one of them this is that story about how Jim was buried where he fell you see like I've mentioned before when you leave on these stories you know to go research these stories to go visit the places you have these preconceived notions in your head well I know I know what happened I know where that place is you know that sort of thing and then when you get out there and you start going from this place to that place to that place to that place you start to put two and two together now wait a minute now if that was all the way over here and this was all the way over there there's no way he could have been buried where he fell because he's buried here and this isn't where it happened now granted uh i was talking to dewey the the gentleman i was telling you about from where from where we were to where we are is by by like i said if you could if you could just walk through the mountain it's just a little over a mile that way if you could walk through the mountain but you can't <laughs> to get there by road like i said is 13 miles you have to go all the way back down and to make one back up the other side all this good stuff now according to the article he was killed within a quarter mile of double camp branch right here as you can see, that's on the other side of a mountain. I, I just, I, I mean, granted, that um, Dewey said that there was an old trail that went back through and went back around the mountain, but you had to climb back down on the other side. I really don't see anybody then or now climbing up over a 2,000 foot mountain and back down the other side to bury a grave to bury someone in my opinion they went around the long way but you never know I guess it, it is theoretically possible it's just not very likely but it's such a beautiful day out here isn't it it's the wind blowing and beautiful sky look at that how beautiful and power line other than power line <laughs> Just a beautiful place out, isn't it? But like I said, you know, it's it's one of those things where Ellison, for example. Ellison, we know, was well, he was pretty much a victim. You know, he got he got into the fight at uh, at the hog trial cabin, and by all accounts, once again, by all accounts, he was trying to defuse the situation not get in the fight himself you know according to the story you know ellison was a pretty big guy and you know they may or may not have been intimidated by his size by his stature that would explain why three of them jumped him you know but ellison like i said he was you know he may have been into some stuff here and there you know that kind of thing and who ain't you know really who ain't but um you know i like I said, Ellison was more of a victim. And, you know, Jim... Jim, he was kind of like Cap, like I mentioned earlier. You know, they they had been known to be... Well, to be instigators of the feud. You know, when something would happen or something like that, they would be the first to, to want to retaliate. But, hey, it's West Virginia, right? That's the rep we got. <laughs> But it's kind of funny, you know, I, I'm very proud to be a hillbilly. I, I'm proud to call myself a hillbilly. I really am. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I just wanted to bring y'all out here, show you Jim's new gravestone, maybe dispel an, an old myth that was started by an overzealous reporter, maybe. Who knows? You know, just trying to sell papers and trying to make the story sound a little more interesting, you know, murdered, buried where he was shot and all that. It's possible. Anyway, all right, guys. Appreciate y'all coming along with me, enjoying this beautiful day out here in southern West Virginia with us. Just out running around, roaming the roads and climbing the mountains and just doing my little hillbilly thing. Uh, 
but uh, I certainly appreciate you guys coming along. I uh, hope we maybe showed you something cool today. And like I said, if any of you would like to subscribe, we would certainly love to have you. We would certainly appreciate it.